Hey y'all, how's it going? My name's Alex, this is History with Character, and today we're tackling my least favorite part of any project. To be specific, my least favorite part of any project is the mock-up process. I am a perfectionist. I would very much prefer to just jump in and get the project going and get the project started. And that's just not possible with what we're working on today. Today we're going to be working on my Regency long stays for my upcoming cosplay. Unfortunately, I am not exactly shaped for Regency short stays. So I had to go with the long stays option, which I feel like are a little bit more complicated than the short stays version. I don't know, but we're going to see what we can do. We're going to make this mock up and we're going to get started on those short stays as soon as we possibly can, because I am dying to work on this project. Let's go. To start out with, this is one of Red Threaded's new multi-size patterns. I didn't want to cut the pattern paper itself, so I simply took some tracing paper and traced out my size of the pattern. I did this mostly so that if I was wrong on my sizing, I could go back and retrace out a larger size if necessary. For my purposes, I used the larger of the two size groups, and I was the smallest in that pattern grouping. Once I had cut out all of those pattern pieces, I laid them out on my fabric, which is just a duck cloth that I picked up from Joann's. In this case, I'm not being super careful with the placement of the grain line and all of that. I figure that this is just a mock-up. This is mostly just to see if I've got the sizing correct, and I can always go in and be more precise on the finished garment. Once all the pattern pieces are laid out, I quickly cut out a rough guesstimate of where those pieces need to go. I will later on go in and cut them more accurately to size. For the bust gores, because I needed four of them, I cut out two and then folded that fabric in half and cut them out again to make four total bust gores. Once I had all the pattern pieces cut out, I marked the pattern using a friction erasable pen. I like using the friction pens, but they can also be difficult when I'm using my iron a lot. Once I had all the pieces marked, the, pa the pattern instructions said to go in and stay stitch all of the gores along the long sides. This was pretty simple, just stay stitch along the stitch lines, pivoting at that point, and then stay stitching up the other side. I think this is to prevent any sort of wrinkling, but it also makes it easier to see where the stitch line is supposed to be for later steps. Once I had the gores prepped, I went into the areas where those gores are going to be placed. I stitched about an eighth of an inch by eye around the slash markings for the gore placement. This is to help prevent fraying and to keep the fabric uh, in one piece later on when the gores are stitched in. You'll notice that I'm using a black thread. This is because it's just a mock-up and it's easier for me to see where my stitch lines are if those thread is in a contrasting color. I slashed open the gores just as the pattern instructed me to do so and then very carefully folded over the edges in order to 
get the finished edge along the outside of the slash. This is very difficult to do, and I nearly burned myself on my iron a few times, but it does lead to a really nicely finished edge. Then I carefully pinned in the gores. The idea here is to get that folded edge lined up with the stitch line. This was kind of difficult to do. It took some fiddling, it took some moving stuff around, and I stabbed myself multiple times. Then I stitched in the gores individually. This is done by just stitching as close to that folded edge as you possibly can. This can be kind of difficult, uh, especially if you are not as precise as you probably should be. But it does lead to a very clean edge and it looks very, very nice. Always make sure to pivot at that point at the bottom. You can go in later and stat satin stitch over that point to reinforce it, but for the mock-up, I chose not to. I did the exact same process for the hip gores. These are specifically the side hip gores. There's also a front hip that gets installed later. That one's a lot more complicated. Once the hip gores were fully installed, I began stitching on the boning channels. At first I was using twill tape that was an, about an inch wide, folded in half to make half inch wide twill tape. This was because I couldn't find my half inch wide twill tape. This project, as I'm sure you can guess, has quite a bit of boning in it. And this is just me installing the extra boning channels. I did not put in the boning channels on the side seams or anywhere along the seams, just because again, it's a mock-up. I probably should have, but I'm lazy. I have made this eyelet tape out of a scrap of canvas and a bunch of grommets. It's not the most professional, but it works in a pinch. I stitched this on where the lacing strips are supposed to go on the final corset. This is just to save me some time because, again, it's a mock-up. I don't want to spend my time hammering in grommets if I don't have to. At this point, I realized that it was going to be very difficult for me to fit this without having the busk in place, so I stitched in a quick and dirty busk pocket. 
This is absolutely not what it's supposed to look like on the finished product, but it'll do for now. The front gores are a little bit more difficult. You stitch down the side seams. For me, I stitched in the seam marking so that I would be able to see exactly where my stitch line was supposed to be. Then you line up the gore with the marking on the other side of the fabric. This doesn't necessarily line up perfectly, and the gores have a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, where the rest of the stays have a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. This means that those seams don't line up. By stitching in the seam line earlier, it made it easier for me to line up everything. You stitch on the front panel of the stays to the hip gore. Moving very slowly and very carefully here to make sure that I stay on the correct seam line. And you do this on both sides of the front piece of the stays. Then you stitch the rest of the stays together. In this case, you're kind of doing a Y seam along that front hip gore. You stitch down the sides, and then once you reach the gore itself, you stop, backstitch, and then stitch down the opposite side of the front gore. I don't think I have footage of that in this particular video, but I do have it for the next video where I make the final product. And finally, after all of that effort, I finally get to try this thing on. I am definitely not wearing the correct undergarments here. This is my Victorian chemise, but I'll fix that later. In trying this on, I realized that I really don't necessarily like not having a front closure on my stays or corset or what have you. This is sped up three times and the initial try on video clip that I have was more than five minutes long. This is just the best part of me trying this thing on and trying to get it tightened down. So while I recognize that there are still some areas where they don't fit perfectly, part of that I'm pretty sure is because the lacing isn't correct and I don't have it as boned as the final garment is going to be. I'm at the point now where I am willing to try it and risk it and go into the final product. I made a couple of notes that I needed to change for the final garment, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with how these came out. The bust gaping will be fixed with a drawstring on the final garment. So there you have it. My Regency short, long stays, not short, stays mock-up is done. I'm super excited. I love how they came out. The fit is actually pretty good straight out of the package. I think the only thing that I'm really going to have to worry about is maybe those hip gores need to be moved in just a little bit. But other than that, I'm really happy with how this project came out. I'm very thrilled that it came out so well out of the first try and... Hopefully, that's a good omen for the rest of this project. Please let me know down below what you thought of this process, 
what do you think this character is going to be? And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you liked it, hit that subscribe button. If you didn't like it, don't tell me. That's, that's all there is to it. Be kind, everybody. Stay safe. And I'll see you next time.